Guys, don't hassle the Hoff. This is the Hall of Fame 1080 from Galax. It is uber overclocked and extremely unnecessary, unless you're overclocking. Well, no, actually, this thing is, um, let me, let me tell you a little bit about Galax before we get into this graphics card. So now, Galax is one of the biggest manufacturers of NVIDIA-based products in the world, as far as, you know, GPUs go. They're, I guess their big customer base is China. Now, when I was over there last time, I was like, you know, there's not a lot of people in America who've heard of Galax. And uh, they were like, well, we focus on this market mainly because there are more PC gamers in China than there are human beings in America. And I was like, oh, that's huge. Never even like hit me because console gaming is not really a thing there. So they uh, own most of the market over there. And they are um, consistently one of the brands that makes cards specifically to break the world record. And the Hall of Fame one, they call it the Hall of Fame because almost every year they break the world record. And next month, uh, well, actually in December, we're gonna be going over and checking out their uh, overclocking carnival. One of the big things about the overclocking carnival is they take this card, uh, they get some of the best overclockers in the world and they push it to the limit. And they do it for a couple of reasons. Of course, it's a big marketing thing. You know, they, they can call Hall of Fame, oh my God, check it out, buy this card, Hall of Fame. But the other thing is that they have all the engineers there and they're able to look at it and say like, okay, well, we were able to achieve this ridiculous overclock, but the, limit, the limiting factor was not the power. We've got plenty of power coming to this. In fact, on this one, you have two eight pin power connectors. That is plenty of power. That's more power than you're gonna need for this, unless you're doing some extreme LN2, you know, uh, overclocking, LN2 cooling, overclocking, and that sort of thing. But they're able to look at the, the circuit and they're saying, okay, it looks like the maybe the RAM is what's not fast enough or the circuitry going to the RAM, or maybe it's the, the MOSFETs on this were failing. So they're able to isolate what part you know, on this card can be improved. Then they take that and they put it into the next generation and make improvements and they just go from there. So here we have an extremely fast GTX 1080. And I put this up against the Founders Edition so you guys will see that in a second. But first off, let's just go through what makes this one special then we'll go through the specs. One thing that's interesting here is there's this big button on the front. It's called the Hyper Boost. And when you press that, it ramps up the fans and uh, also just allows you to overvolt the hell out of this card. So you press this and the fans will ramp up pretty much all the way. The, the RPM is like 3000 or something when you do that. So it does get kind of loud, but the temperatures on this, when the button is pressed, I ran a uh, Valley benchmark for like 20 minutes and the temps were 39 to 40 degrees Celsius, which is about what I would expect some things to be running at almost idle, which that's crazy. And then when I turned that off, it was whisper quiet and the temps were around 45 to 46 Celsius. So even with, you know, the, the boost off here on the back. It was it was uh, nice and quiet. Now, the other thing that's nice here, they've got three 90 millimeter fans on here. The entire thing is covered in what they call their HOF armor full uh, coverage. So underneath the shroud here and underneath the heat sink, you see a bunch of fins and there's some heat pipes in there right above the core, but it's hard to see, but there's an actual shroud over the entire motherboard. Uh, there, I mean, not motherboard, over the entire PCB. Hall of Fame backplate, mainly for rigidity, nice brushed aluminum feel to it. Nothing is really tacky about this card. Speaking of nothing being tacky, we also have some LEDs on the top here. It's just a very elegant breathing LED. They call it classy. I was like, well, it's kind of classy, I guess. One weird thing about this card, other than the freaking size, it's massive and it's heavy, and that's why you need the back plate for extra rigidity. And they've also included this for extra rigidity, this hole here. Let me just, uh, yeah, you put that in your system, you line it up, and then you lock it in with this to add some structural support or just add some support for the card. This is gonna have the structural support. This thing is, a, you know, it's three slots pretty much or two and a half, but it's gonna take up three slots. And then this button on the back here, it's a little bit difficult to get installed in some systems because it's gonna mess with your, you know, your brackets in the back and all that sort of thing. So this was a little bit, I had to kind of bend the case a little bit to put this into the system. So that's um, sort of a strange spot. I wish it was, um, I don't know. I, I guess it's good to have it on the outside, but why does it have to be so damn big? Like, can you have like a tiny little button? Or do we need this giant, this feels right. It's like, yeah, push that big button, make it faster. Good. All right, so we've got uh, 2560 CUDA cores on this. Uh, the base clock is 1809 and the boost clock goes up to 1961. I was easily able to get about 160 extra uh, megahertz out of this without just, just by clicking around. I didn't do any of the overvolting or anything like that. So it's very easy to overclock this card. Um, I'm gonna wait and let the pros do it in, uh, you know, Wuhan, China coming up in December. Uh, but I've seen some people who have already been able to push this card to 2.5. So that's pretty ridiculous. Uh, memory speed is 10 gigabits per second. And we have eight gigabytes of uh, GDDR5X memory, 256-bit uh, memory interface, SLI support, of course. 
uh, max res of, you know, uh, 4096 by 2160, true 4K. This is a substantial card, 317 by 137 by 55 millimeters, and with the bracket, it's 330 by 152 by 55 millimeters. So the bracket adds a little bit of space in your case. If you get the case space, then use the bracket, but I would use the bracket anyway. I call it a pole. They call it a, with the pole with the bracket. All right, you guys want to talk about some of the benchmarks? I'm trying to think of anything else I think is negative about this card, other than the, the size is gargantuan, and that's going to be, for most people, that's not going to be a big deal, because 99% of the people out there run one of these GPUs in their system, so the rest of your slots will be populated with whatever else you want, man. Now, I compared this to my benchmarks on the 1080 Founders Edition. It's not a fully scientific comparison, because I benchmarked that on my 5960X in my machine that's overclocked, and I'm in benchmarking this one on a 5820K, but even then, this one is outrunning my uh, Founders Edition. So let's just go through and pop into Doom at 4K, and you can see there a substantial increase in performance here with this overclocked card over the Founders Edition. Like, freaking substantial at 4K, that's kind of more than it should be. But anyway, and then we almost, we almost have 20 FPS uh, difference at 1080p. Soma, I like Soma because Soma's an indie game and they've made their own engine and it's not really gonna favor any any particular hardware. Uh, 4K, the performance is pretty similar, but with a slight edge to the Hall of Fame here. And then at 1080p, uh, again, we see over 20 FPS difference. Gears of War 4 is here, it's new. It's got just about every graphical, you know, setting I've ever heard of. It's DirectX 12. That's gonna be a kind of a, a new thing for some people. Anyway, um, we were only able to benchmark this one. I, I haven't had time to benchmark my other card, but I'll just tell you right now, at 1080p on Ultra, 150 frames a second, and then at 4K, 50.7 uh, frames a second. So we may try this out on whatever it is, a ludicrous mode or something, but I want to put this head to head with some of the other graphics cards. I especially want to put this head to head with one of the AMD cards because that game uh, takes advantage of true asynchronous compute. These do it in software, pretty good job, but the AMD does it in hardware, so I really want to test out that game later like that. Switching over to The Witcher 3, as, as you can see here, slight edge to this one over the Founders Edition. And then at 1080p, that edge gets even bigger. In uh, Valley, it's almost the same, within the margin of error, but the performance between this and the Founders Edition are not that different. And the same at 1080p and 4K, so it's just really not that big of a deal. All right, the Vanishing of Ethan Carter, um, as you can see at 4K, not a huge difference, but you know, a little bit of an edge here. And at 1080p, the edge, of course, gets bigger as usual as you go down to resolutions. This card is freaking fast and heavy and big. The power phase design, I forgot to tell you about that. It's 12 phase power uh, design on this. Yeah, everything everything going to the CPU looks nice and clean. If you're gonna be doing a lot of overclocking, uh, this is one of the cards to buy. Zotek and EVGA, they, they, they also have pretty crazy uh, overclocked cards, the Amp Extreme and the, you know, the Kingpin and all that sort of thing. Those, those are also fun for overclocking, but um, I'm expecting to see some crazy things out of this in China. So we'll bring you those reports as soon as we get back from, from Wuhan. But right now, this is um, substantially faster than the Founders Edition, making it one of the fastest graphics cards I've ever put my hands on. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and ask them in the uh, comments. Let us know what you think. Go ahead and grab some of those t-shirts. We made them for you so you don't have to be naked. Unless you like being naked. But then wear it, you know, like as a cape. And be that weirdo who wears a shirt as a cape and runs around naked in a hotel. Don't get arrested. All right, see you guys later. What are you laughing at over there? There's nothing funny here. This is serious.